Hi there, and welcome back to the Grand AI Tournament. It's time for Galaxy 1. Let's have a look. Who is most powerful? The Strigoi seem to be good. The Satha Entity seem to be great. Tarth Enurim and the Imperium of Vitruvia seem to do well. And there's, I think, no one has been eliminated yet. What are these small points? They are from the Imperium of Vitruvia. And there's the Re United Republic of Systems still holding. But now let's look at the current power. You can see that the central construction unit here still leads the fray. Then comes the Strigo Empire, the Tarth Enurim. The Satha Entity, the Eternal Council of Cracks, the Imperium Vitruvia, and the Viseric Order, the Imperial Ilda, the Tribes of Valgar, and the United Republic of Systems still surviving. And let's have a look at the actual points. I'll not click everything here because for the points I've got an Excel document. Not really Excel, free Excel. And um, so I'll just tell you where they stand. It will probably be a little bit of a mix and you'll see why, because some empires dramatically changed their placement, some nearly stayed the same. So um, you know that for place one you get 10 points in a round and uh, for place two, you get nine and so on. So the central construction unit this round gets 10 points and has a total of 19 points. Strigoi Empire goes from 10 to nine points. So from place one to two and has also 19 points now. Then next we've got the Setha Entity. They've also, they, they've dropped the place to uh, I think four so they've got 8 and 7 points now, 15 points. Then we've got actually two ones. The Eternal Council of Cracks. That has also dropped the place. Um, so instead of 7, it got 6 points this time, but still has 13 points. The Tarth Enurim on the other side went up some places, I think to number 3 and got up from 5 to 8 points, so also has 13 points in sum. Then we've got the Imperium of Vitruvia. Oh, drop the place, but still from 6 and 5 points gets 11 points. Then we've got the, the Viseric Order. Stayed the same, actually. I think... Uh, It is 7th place this time, so both times 7th place is 8 points in sum, 2 times 4. The Imperial Ildar, 2 times 3 points is at 6. The Tribes of Valga, 2 times 2 points is at 4. The United Republic of Systems still hanging on at 2 points. Great that they survived after <laughs> after being last place uh, last time so they must have done really well because if you're last place in after 100 years it's really tough to even survive in these games so that's galaxy one let's go to galaxy two in galaxy two here we can see that there is great federations going on here, the Star Alliance, the Glorious Pact, and the Bright Axis. These two, ironically, couples of <laughs> determined exterminators, the Harbinger Replicators and the Nanny Bot Beta. Then uh, we have the EIO YO Triad and the Party Post forming the Glorious Pact, and the UU Union of Irenic Perfection and the United Skeleton Conglomerate forming the Bright Axis. Who is really big? The EU, our triad, the Harbingers. And then anybody better was starting to get big. And the Truthsith, the Party Pos, all kind of big. And also the Uyu Union of Irenic Perfection. So, everyone pretty big. But who is leading the point scores? Let's see. The Harbinger Replicators. We'll start with that and uh, yeah, I'll not click anywhere in the video because I'm in my tables now. 
So the Harbinger replicators went from place one to place one, both times 10 points. A perfect score of 20 points. Then the Yu Yu Union of you know, Ironic Perfection went from place two to place three, but still got the 17 points. So to, uh, second place now. Then we have the Yu Yao Triad, who went from uh, actually fourth place to second place. So has seven and nine points, and now has 16 points and place three. Then we have two times place four and five. The party pos staying the same at a uh, place four, I think. No, a place place five with two times six points. And uh, the nanny bot beta, who actually improved a lot from place. Uh, six to place four so five and seven points also 12 points both then we got the commonwealth of Phenotion plants with 11 points but they dropped dramatically from place number three to place uh, number i think eight so eight and three points the 11 points uh, press your thumbs for these so that they survive the dnr hall has been eliminated still got their four points the hunger also uh, the hunger actually increased got f got up from uh, place number eight to six so three and five points and to a total of eight points the true sith empire also improved um they went from place number nine to place number seven for two plus four is six points and the United Skelsian conglomerate also improved due to the falling of the Dionar Horde. They have now from, risen from one to two points and a total of three points. So they are ninth now. So that was Galaxy 2. Really interesting. I mean, that, that alliance of the determined exterminators Will they win or will the one of the other federations make the game? We'll see. Let's go to galaxy number three. Galaxy three, quite another story. Look at that. The Darth Quok Quok Star Empire is still going strong. The Claptrap is good. The Empire of Seronia. And here, woo! The Sacredly and the Peacock Empire, the newly founded <laughs> empire, has actually I think eaten up the other peacocks. Then there's the Badirian Empire that is pretty big. The Kyoti Consciousness that is pretty big. Kingdom of Medlan is pretty big. Like the, the empires of the Rim are doing quite well. Let's look at the power they have. First one is the Empire of Cyronia, which is actually in the middle here. So doing great. The Technocracy of Aurus here at the Rim. Also nice. The Kingdom of Metlon comes then with eight points. The Claptraps with seven. The Badirian with six. The Kyodi. Consciousness here still big with five. The Arikaveen Annihilators. And now it starts to get diminutive. Where are they even? Are they here? I'm not sure, but they're still there. They still exist. Here, they are. They are here. So, uh, 10, 9, 8, 6, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4 points. The Darth Quok Quok, though, less powerful, strangely. Four points. The Sacred Leon, the Peacock, have three points here. And this means that already two empires have been eliminated. Let's look at the table, discuss it from the lead the empire of Cyronia. Let's see. So, 
Empire of Saronia is actually not leading. The technocracy of Oros had 10 points last time, 9 points this time, so fell a place. They're at 19 points now. The Kingdom of Metlon also fell a place from 2nd to 3rd, 9 and 8 points. Mm, so, not at all. Uh, the Empire of Saronia is now in place too with 8 and 10 points, so with the 3rd and 1st place they take the 2nd place. All in all, the Kingdom of Netherlands is place number 3 with 9 and 8 points. It goes to 17 points. Then we have the Claptraps, 2 times the 7, 4th place, solid 14 points. The Badirian Empire, that looks so big, has uh, 2 times the... I think the fifth place, so six points, and some they have 12 points. The Horde has been eliminated. After being in the middle of the park with five points, they still have five points and they don't exist anymore. On the other hand, the Aragavin Annihilators still exist with two times four points, and uh, they're still running like the same. The QD Consciousness has developed themselves from three points to five points. So they're going to the middle of the park now, also with eight points. The Darth Quokwoks have also improved one place. Probably to, due to the falling of the hold, they get from two points to three points. Now I have five points. Leon the Peacock Technocracy with their one point, they have been eliminated. Leon the Peacock Union also has been eliminated. And the Sacred Leon the Peacock Empire, that is actually, I think, I don't know if it's new or if it has existed at 100 years. It has two points now. So it's there. It's there taking points. Leon the Peacock is not dead. <laughs> Very interesting combination. How will it work out for the three top players? Technocracy of Oros, Kingdom of Metlon and Empire of Saronia. We'll see. Let's go to, uh, to galaxy number four. So looking at galaxy number four, we see if a few really big chunks. This seems to be a federation that is pretty big. Get off my lawn. Seems not to be in that federation because there's borders here. And then we have the United Prasnakan State, which is very big. The Mirovandias, the sibling supervisors, Idarians, Felix Seishar. They are all pretty big chunks. Who is most powerful at the moment? And that would be the sibling supervisors. They are created by Ultra, Ultra, Ultra Suave, the leaders at the moment. Then comes the Indarian Empire with nine points, Republic of New Triscleria with eight points, Mirovandia Empire with seven points, the Galactic Hoggards with six points, the United Prosnacans with five points, the Pax Nutriki at Lucum Magnum with four points, the Raven Host with three points, the Felix Seishard with two points, and the Get Off My Lawn with only one point anymore. So let's see how this combines into Galaxy 4. So we have the Idarian Empire. They dropped one place, but still going strong. From 10 to 9 points, they have a total of 19 points. Then we've got the sibling supervisors, totally on number two. They've got they've gotten from eight to ten points, now at eighteen points. Then we've got the Republic of New Triscleria. They got from up from seven to eight points, now at fifteen points in place number three. The Mirovandia Empire from six to seven points gets to thirteen points and place number four. The Galactic Horde Empire takes place number five with five to six points then now 11 points and uh, place number six still is get off my lawn went from nine to only one point they are now dead last but they still got 10 points so that's it that's it get off my lawn yes will they lose their lawns hopefully not then we've got the United Prosnakan State. Uh, was it number seven now? They've got eight points now. They went from three to five points. The Raven Host went from four to three points and takes number eight. 
Then we've got Pax Nutriki at Luke Magnum. They got from 2 up to 4 points and are now at 6 points. And place number 9, the Felix Seichard, went from 1 to 2 points and with 3 points is now last still. But there's hope for the Felix Seichard. Pretty cool galaxy, got to say especially the beneficial alliance what will what influence will this have on the survival of these empires i mean the pax nutriki at local magnum and galactic Hogwarts empire are both not very strong but they may survive or even win in the end because of their alliance we'll see how that works out now let's go to the next galaxy galaxy number number five what a setup right the Sjungstalt has taken over, wow, quite a lot of the galaxy. And then we seem to have some kind of federation here. And then we have the Cryptodrians, still good, the Consciousness, still good, the Society of the Ancients. These new empires, the Prikikti, the Society of the Ancients, the Zim Hierarchy. There's a lot active here. We'll have a look at that. How is it going? So... The Consciousness leading a Devouring Swarm. 10 points, the Syungestalt. 9 points, then the Raxian Swarm. With <laughs> 8 points. Yeah, that's a Swarmy Galaxy. The Ketling Star Pack, these strange things. Um, with 7 points, the Imperium of Anathurians with 6 points. Cryptodian Empire with 5 points. Sacrosanct Xano Imperium with four points, the Society of the Ancients, with three points, the Renarian Directorate, with two points, the Sim Hierarchy, with one point, and Prikikiti, with zero points. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see how this reflects in the total point scores. So leading this is still the Sjön Gestalt, even if they fell one place from 10 to 9 points. They are now at 19 points. Then we have the Consciousness, who ro rose from 8 to 10 points, now at 18 points. We have the Raxian Swarm, who fell one place from 9 points to 8 points, now at 17 points, number 3. And then uh, the Kettling Star Pack follows with still 2 times 7 points, 14 points. We have the Imperium of Anathurians with 11 points from 5 up to 6 points. We've got the Renarian Directorate from 6 down to 2 points with 8 points in some. The Sacrosanct Xano Imperium from 3 up to 4 points. And now a total at 7 points. The Cryptodian Empire from 2 up to a whole lot of 5 points. Now 7 points. Then. We've got the Hanushdam Trading Syndicate, who disappeared. They just disappeared. They were so big and they just whoop, disappeared. Poof. It was just like that. So they still got five, four points, though. And uh, then we've got the Society of the Ancients, who popped up from zero to three points now. Uh, the Zim Hierarchy, still there, with two times one point. And uh, yeah, Prikikiti still staying at zero point but still surviving and we'll also see if here that favorable concord the federation makes a big difference in the next 100 years or if the swarms and hives will take over this galaxy let's go to the next galaxy together so we're in Galaxy 6 now. As you can see, Panaxala Pen Camiento is dominating this. United Corporation Front, though, is pretty good. Platypus Orthodoxy, Shadowborn of Bora, probably, the Holy Kayon. Everyone's looking okay, maybe, um, except for the Sekloka Shinites and the, the Valdari Authority. Mm, no, still good. Everyone's looking good. Has someone disappeared? Maybe the Caladian Dominion, or is that enlightened? Will? No. Look at that. Ooh, it's it's strange colonies everywhere. Let's have a look. Who is most powerful? Panaxalapen Camiento. 
is at 10 points. Platypus Orthodoxy is at 9 points. United Corporation Front is at 8 points. Shadowborn of Dora is at 7 points. Holy Kayon is at 6 points. The Valdari Authority is at 5 points. The Caladian Dominion is at 4 points. The Sek Lokarshi Knights at 3 points. There's also a federation of weaker members. We'll see how that follows up. And now let's look at the total point scores. Panaxala Pen Camiento stays at 10 points. Two times is at the perfect 20. Then uh, we have the United Corporation Front who dropped one place from 9 to 8 points but still has 17 points to go for. The Platypus Orthodoxy from 7 to 9 points has a proud 16 points. Then the Shadowborn of Dora down from 8 to 7 now has 15 points. And then we have two empires the Valdari Authority from yeah, 5 to 5 points stayed the same now. A total of 10 points. The Holy Kayon from 4 to 6 points up. Still 10 points. Then the Vool... No, the Caladian Dominion from 3 to 4 points now at 7 points. The Vool Eradicators were eliminated but still got their 6 points. Uh, then we've got the Seklokar Shinites who went up from 1 to 3 points. Now we've got 4 points. Then the Sir Collective with their 2 points has been eliminated. Let's see how the galaxy works out, especially with the Federation in mind. And let's go to galaxy number 7. Galaxy number 7, you can see that there's probably some Federations going on here too. Then that the House Li Sharo, the Great Tribal Aggregate, are dominating this somehow. And uh, let's see how the power scores are. Yeah, Great Triple Aggregate leads with 10 points, the House Leisha Row with 9, the Cantobot Experiment uh, are at 8 points, the Flood Infestation at 7, the Galactic Eralka Mining Coalition at 6, the Sonvira Imperium with 5, Covenant of Ra with 4 points, the Holy Mantis Verb with 3 points, and the Papal Stars with 2 points, and that again is a federation of the weaker members. Will they be able to gain some places? We'll find out soon. But let's look together at the complete point scores now. So we got the great triple aggregate with another perfect 20 after 2 times 10 points. The house Lee Charo, 2 times 9 points up to a total of 18. We've got the Flood Infestation, who is at 15 points, with 8 and 7 points together. We've got the Cantobot Experiment, also at 15 points, with 7 and now 8 points. Then we've got the Galactic Eralka Mining Corporation from 4 to 6 points, a total of 10. We've got the Papal Stars from 6 to 2 points, now going for 8 points. The Holy Mantis Verb from 5 to 3 points down is also at 8 points. And the Zonvera Imperium from 3, three points up to 5 points is also at 8 points. Then we've got the Covenant of Ra up from 2 up to 4 points into a total of 6 points now. And the Fast of the, and the Furious 30 unfortunately got eliminated with a 1 point still. So <laughs> let's see how this works out. The Great Tribbles, of course, dominating. I mean, who knows Star Trek? <laughs> knows that the Tribbles will be dominating and aggregating and whatever. So let's go to galaxy number 8. Well, looking at galaxy number 8, one sees directly that the Celtic Empire is pretty powerful, as is the Yuri Confederation and the Ancestral Covenant. Remember crap, I... <laughs> it's also not bad, with it also Nurian Mercantile Union. Then it, it shrinks somehow, but it's still, it's clear that the Celtic Empire should have this, but who knows? Who is most powerful? Celtic Empire with 10 points this round, then the Yuri Confederation with 9 points this round, Emmanuel Krebhive with 8 points this round, Nurin Mercantile Union with 7 points this round, the Alfgar get battle plans, clans with a harmonious alliance of the weakest together with the ancestral covenant um, 
with six points. The Terran Imperium is there with uh, five points. The Ancestral Convenant with four points. The Orlok Coalition, also newly spawned, with three points. And the Great Orlok Commonwealth with two points. Let's look at the complete points, of course, though. We've got the Celtic Empire with a perfect 20 again. Two times 10 points. Then the Yuri Confederation with two times nine points to a total of 18. The Immanuel Crab Hive, two times eight points to 16. The Nurian Mercantile Union with two times seven points to 14. Pretty st static galaxy, it seems. Then we've got 10 points from the Ancestral Convenant from six to four points, a little bit down. The, ch the Alpha Battle Clans up from four to six points now, also at ten points. We've got uh, the Terran Imperium that is from three to up to five points at a total of eight points now. And uh, the Trotsky Conspiracy is still there. They're five points, but now has been eliminated. With four points, the Great Orlok Commonwealth is still there with two times two points. Uh, the Sticks and Tooth Factory and the Wave have been long eliminated and the Orlok Coalition is now new there with their three points. <laughs> yeah, the Orlocks, we'll see what becomes of them too. But uh, most importantly, who will win Galaxy 8? The Celtic Empire looks pretty close, but you never know. You never know. This is galaxy number 9. You can see that the high plumage is pretty good. The Skivinstar Empire 2, the Network Guardians. But let's have a look at the relative power scores. Here. Now, what kind of points will they get this round, this 100 years? The Network Guardians are actually leading this? Getting 10 points, the Procavia Capensis Assembly um, are getting 9 points, the Healing Church is getting 8 points, the High Plumage is getting 7 points, the Earth Custodianship sick at 6 points, the Grocknach Ploran Commonwealth is at 5, the Wolfen Pack of Avuda is at 4 points, Skivin Star Empire is at 3 points, the Star Empire of Valhalla is at 2 points, the Skivin Independent Union is at one point. So, more Skivins for the world, right? Let's see who is leading in the complete score. So, we have the Procavia Capensis Assembly leading with two times nine points, two times place, place two. Uh, following up is the Grokna Plorin Commonwealth with 7 and 5 points. And after them, directly the Star Empire of Valhalla, who goes down from 10 to 2 points to a total of 12. The Earth Custodianship was 2 times 6 points. And the Network Guardians, which go up from 2 to, a total, to 10 points to a total of 12 points crazy developments here then uh, we've got the skivin star empire that drops from eight to three points to a total of 11. we've got the high plumage who rises from four to seven points to a total of 11 and the healing church who rises from three to eight points with to a total of 11 as well then we've got the Wolfen pack of avuda who rises from one to total of four points uh, to a, no, to a total of five points, with four points here. And the Waffen Republic of Taraska, who, uh, or which after five points in the last round now disappeared. Probably reunited with the Waffen Pack, the other Waffen Pack, we don't know. The Skivin Independent Union, though, goes from uh, one, uh, goes now at one point and is the last empire we count here. That is pretty dramatic. I mean, especially with Star Empire of Valhalla. Will they come back? Probably not. 
and how could the network guardians rise so much? Let's look at these guys. I've got emotion emulators. Our power drills and are durable, mass-produced and luxurious. Is that good? It seems to be. It seems to be. We'll see how this works out. So, that was the last galaxy, galaxy number 9. In one of the coming videos, when uh, I've uh, worked myself a little bit into table calculations, I may present a total score, but I'll of course present the total score comparison at the end. For now though, we'll, have, we'll make it galaxy by galaxy, because that's really um, what counts most, I think. Because from each galaxy, one participant will qualify either if he has at the end most points or wins the galaxy. One of these two things should happen. Like if, if a, an empire wins the galaxy, that overrides um, like the point score for that. But still, we'll keep track of the point score. Now, if an empire wins, I've thought about that, what would happen then? We'll stop the galaxy then, and all the empires will get uh, the respective number of point scores they had at the end of the galaxy for the rest of up to 1000 years. So you'll still get a point score that you can look at that would represent the strength of your empire compared to the others in the complete table at the end. So, uh, that said, I'm looking forward to the next round of 300 years. We'll see, maybe, I mean, there are some empires and federations who look pretty good. Will someone of them win? We'll find out in the next episode of the 200 to 300 years period. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. This is Ivan Vulcan, signing out.